Let's take a look at some hardware cold wallets for crypto management available on the market today. To start us off, we're going to be taking a look at some OneKey products. First up is the OneKey Mini. This is one of the cheaper options at $58. It is a hardware cold storage wallet. It does have a screen, but it doesn't have extra nice features like a camera for a QR code scanner or a fingerprint reader. And like virtually all hardware wallets, they of course talk about how they have security built into the device, but they don't get particularly specific about that security. This hardware wallet will allow you to store multiple coins and tokens. In fact, we can see some of those compatibilities here. In this case, this is compatibilities with some tokens, some coins, as well as some other applications and wallets. The OneKey Mini does use open source software, which many people consider to be a big plus. And here we can take a quick look at their technical specifications as far as the size and weight, size of the screen, and the, just the style of input that you have, which is represented just by these buttons that are on the device. Moving on from the OneKey Mini, OneKey also has the OneKey Classic, which looks a lot like the OneKey Mini. It's a little bit more money. This is another hardware cold storage wallet, and this wallet is also relatively small in terms of its physical size. It's only three millimeters thick, weighs less than an ounce, and so it shouldn't weigh you down, although not a lot of people travel on a regular basis with a hardware wallet on their person. This is one of the hardware wallets that does offer Bluetooth connectivity for those of you that might prefer Bluetooth. And like the OneKey Mini, it has support for a number of tokens and different applications and wallets. And also like the Mini, the Classic is also open source. Moving up the product list, OneKey also has the OneKey Touch, which is quite a bit more than the OneKey Mini. This comes in at about $250. The OneKey Touch also offers a larger screen, giving you a 3.1 inch color touch screen. And the OneKey Touch also has support for a large number of cryptos. Like the previous OneKey products, it is compatible with a number of different tokens and applications and wallets. And like the previous OneKey devices, the OneKey Touch is also open source. And we see the technical specifications here. The OneKey Touch also does offer Bluetooth connectivity. Also definitely of note, none of these OneKey products, including the OneKey Touch, offer a camera for QR code scanning. And at a $250 price point, I find the fact that the OneKey Touch to not have that ability built into the device to be a little bit strange, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. Here we have the Blockstream Jade, which is a completely different manufacturer, completely different product from the OneKey. The main thing to know about the Blockstream Jade right up front is that this is for Bitcoin. This is not for altcoins. So if you are purely interested in Bitcoin cold storage, then you might be interested in this product. Like most hardware wallets, they go on to talk about how the device is secure and it's a great way to store your crypto. Unlike the OneKey devices though, this Blockstream Jade does actually have a camera for QR code scanning, and it does not have USB or Bluetooth connectivity requirements, although it does offer Bluetooth if you so choose to use Bluetooth. The screen on the Blockstream Jade is a 1.14 inch IPS LCD, which is large enough to be usable, but still a little bit on the small side. And you'll see here Blockstream Jade's comparison chart with popular wallets like the Ledger and the Treasure. And you'll see here that the Blockstream Jade is $65. So the price is certainly an attractive detail if you are interested in simply storing Bitcoin and no altcoins. If you're interested in storing Bitcoin as well as other tokens and coins, there are of course other wallets that you can purchase, one of which is the Zero or the Engrave Zero. One of the things that you'll notice immediately about the Engrave Zero is it does have a full color screen and it also does have a camera for QR code scanning. 
The Ungrave Zero also gives you biometric security by scanning your fingerprint. The other thing about the Ungrave Zero is that most hardware wallets are EAL5 with their secure element chip, or in other words, their secure element chip meets EAL5 security standards. There are some wallets that are EAL6, many are EAL5, but the Engrave Zero is actually EAL7. However, one of the problems with the Engrave Zero is the price. The price of it is, well, as you can see here, it's $400 for the device. Their graphene mnemonic phrase or seed phrase or, or keyword backup solution is rather pricey. It's $150. Although if you buy it with your Engrave Zero, you can get it for only $100. For people that are looking for a good value with with good options and features, the SafePal S1 is a pretty good wallet to consider. At only $50, it offers actually quite a bit. For one thing, the SafePal S1, although it's not a touchscreen, and the screen itself is still only 1.3 inches, even though the device clearly has space for a larger screen, it at least has a color screen and it has a multi-direction keypad that you can use to click around. Whereas a lot of simplistic hardware devices like the Ledger and the Treasure Model 1, the, Pre the Treasure Model T, you know, they only have like one or two buttons. Now the, the Treasure Model T does have a touchscreen, but the screen is is small. I think it's just a little bit bigger than the SafePal S1. And the Treasure Model T is also something like $180. The SafePal S1 has the stamp of approval from Binance Labs. And as I mentioned earlier, most hardware wallets that do use a secure element chip rather than some other proprietary security mechanism, many of them are EAL5. The SafePal S1 is EAL5+. Plus as you can see here. So the SafePal S1 also has no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, no Ethernet, no NFC, and does not require a USB connection. Although it does use USB to charge, but it's not a data port. The SafePal S1 also supports a pretty wide range of coins and tokens. For example, one that you may or may not have heard of would be SafeMoon. You know, this does support SafeMoon. Personally, I'm not a holder of SafeMoon, but I do know one or two people who are, and they might be interested in this product for the simple fact that they can transfer SafeMoon to this device. And again, you get a comparison chart where they will, of course, compare themselves to the most popular wallets on the market, which are made by Ledger and Treasure. And you'll see that right off the bat, the SafePal S1 costs less money. It's also the only one out of these wallets that they are comparing that offers QR code scanning. And it's also the only air-gapped wallet, whereas the ledgers and the treasure require you to plug them in via USB to your computer. Although, yes, it does have a full-color screen, it's only 1.3 inches, which is a little disappointing. I actually kind of wish that they would make a SafePal S2 virtually the same, only doubling the size of the display, and maybe possibly even making it touchscreen, which may or may not be all that useful with still a rather small screen. And, you know, just charging an extra 20 or $30. You know, it would still be a very reasonable price and it would have a larger screen. On the flip side, a smaller screen like this is probably less prone to cracking or breaking. Although at the same time, why are you carrying your hardware wallet in a situation where it is likely to get cracked or broken? One of the more interesting hardware wallet choices on the market today is the Tangem. And the reason the Tangem is a bit more interesting is because it doesn't have a color screen. It doesn't have a screen at all. It doesn't have a QR code scanner or any type of camera for any reason. In fact, the Tangem hardware wallet is basically a credit card, or at least it resembles a credit card. The way the Tangem wallet works is it is sold in either a pack of two cards or a pack of three cards. And the reason for that is because the Tangem hardware wallet is not a BIP39 hardware wallet, meaning it doesn't give you 12 or 18 or 24 keywords or seed phrases or mnemonic phrases. There are no phrases. The private key is 
permanently stored inside the cards and it is not designed to ever give out the private keys. You can't back them up. The way that you back up the Tangem hardware wallet is precisely by way of having your wallet set up on the multiple cards that you order. So when you order the Tangem hardware wallet, you're going to have a choice. Do you want two cards? That's $43.90. Do you want a pack of three cards? That's $55.90. There is no backing up the Tangem wallet in any other way. So if you had a three pack, you could carry one in your wallet if you really wanted to, or you could keep it at, in your desk at home or in your safe at home or something like that, rel relatively secure. You could take the second card and you could bury it in your backyard. You could take the third card and you could put it into a safety deposit box in a bank. You know, that is your backup is the fact that you have multiple cards. If you get down to one card, then the thing to do would be to order another pack of two or three cards and transfer your cryptos to your new set of cards because you can't order more cards and add it to your existing wallet. Okay, so when you when you buy a pack of two cards and set them up, that is your wallet. When you buy a pack of three cards and set those up, that is your wallet. And if you have two cards, then you have one to use and one as a backup. If you buy three cards, then you have one to use and two as backups. As soon as you get down to one card, you should buy another pack of cards and transfer your crypto to the new pack of cards or just buy some other hardware wallet or I suppose you could use a hot wallet if you really wanted to and transfer your crypto to a new wallet. Therefore, when you lose the last card in your set or it gets damaged or stops working, you still have access to your crypto because you've already transferred it to another wallet. And I just wanted to talk about the Lattice One available from Grid Plus. And as you can see here in the image, it is a much different looking wallet. You know, it's something that is designed to pretty much just sit on your desk. And this card that you see on the right hand side that's labeled safe card, that's actually primarily for backing up your private keys from your wallet. Although I'm pretty sure you can use the safe card as a wallet as well. I'm not 100% clear on that. I haven't purchased or used one of these personally. However, I have seen a few demonstrations and a few reviews. And and I personally am not that interested in this. And there's a few reasons for that. The first reason is that it is a relatively large device that is made to sit on your desk. Hardware wallets usually are the kind of thing that you want to tuck away or hide or secure somewhere. You're not usually using your hardware wallet very often unless you're, you know, like a day trader possibly. But for the most part, you, you put your hardware wallet away, you know, maybe in a couple days you get it out when you want to buy some crypto transfer it over to your hardware wallet or transfer some crypto from your hardware wallet to an exchange to sell it or, you know, something of that nature. Not not just simply have your hardware wallet sitting on your desk at all times. The other thing that I'm not real crazy about with this product is although, yeah, it, it gives you a five inch touchscreen, but it's not color. And I get that you don't need color, but it's 2023. This is this is an expensive product. It's I think it's like four or five hundred dollars. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. And it doesn't even have a color screen. Another thing that I'm not really crazy about with this particular hardware wallet is hardware wallets typically are cold storage. Cold storage means that they do not connect to the internet directly. This, on the other hand, does. It has an ethernet port on the back to plug in a network cable, and it also supports Wi-Fi. So this is a hardware hot wallet which is odd. It does support a number of different tokens, so that's good. And it does support MetaMask, sort of. It actually uses an unofficial fork of MetaMask to work with MetaMask, but you can use it with MetaMask. And, you know, these cards, as I said, they are primarily for backing up your private key. But the thing is, the only way that you would be able to use that backup copy of your private key would be to buy another lattice. So if you're sold on the lattice, that's not too big of a deal. But if you don't want to continue using the lattice, then your safe card backup is not very helpful anymore. And if we go to click on learn more, see if we can uh, find the price. And, and yeah, there, there you go. It's $397. If I were going to spend $400 on a hardware wallet right now, I would have 
have to go with the Engrave Zero, primarily because I'm not aware at the moment of another hardware wallet at that price point that I feel would be something that I would want. This Grid Plus Lattice One is kind of a neat concept, but between its large size made to sit on your desk all the time, the fact that it's, it has internet connectivity and the fact that it's $400, I'm not really super interested in this. Next up, we have Keystone and Keystone has two primary offerings for their hardware wallets currently. They have the Keystone Pro and the Keystone Essential. They are basically the same device. The Keystone Pro has a fingerprint reader. It comes with a rechargeable battery and it also has a self-destruct mechanism that the essential model does not have. Both the Keystone Pro and the Keystone Essential have a four inch touchscreen and they both come with a camera for QR code scanning. Keystone also integrates with MetaMask and supports a wide range of cryptocurrencies. In fact, they advertise that they have support for over 5,500 cryptocurrencies. Of all of the wallets that we've talked about today, the three that I have the most interest in are definitely the SafePal S. SL1. In fact, I do own a SafePal SL1, the Tangem. And one of the things that I neglected to mention previously is the Tangem is actually EAL6+. Plus. Again, most hardware wallets are EAL5. The Tangem is EAL6 and the Engrave Zero is EAL7. My third favorite of all of these wallets are the Keystone. SafePal SL1, Tangem, and the Keystone products. Just simply between the price and the features of all three of these products are really what make them stand out to me the most. And I could, in fact, to get a Tangem, possibly even a Keystone later this year, just because I am very curious to get more familiar with them. And it would be a little bit more helpful to actually have the products physically in order to do a bit of an actual in-depth hardware wallet review. Because I have the SafePal S1, I may, in fact, do a review video on the SafePal S1. There are a huge number of wallets on the internet available today. Like with anything, be sure you do your own research. Don't just take my word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. I don't care if Warren Buffett himself decides that crypto isn't such a bad thing and he gets behind a crypto project and even puts a billion dollars of his own money into it and then decides that he thinks that some wallet is the greatest product on the face of the earth. Don't care. Always do your own research.